trying to inspire my drum, but uh, I want to give you a snack as you go home uh, of the word of God and those that is going to give you uh, strong and then courage, even as I speak to us from the power to witness. Tell your neighbor power to witness. And maybe before I begin my message for today, I'd like to uh, uh, welcome us uh, to observe uh, five days of prayer and fasting in view of the visit by our bishop, our presiding bishop who is coming uh, this uh, Sunday. Uh, we need to pray for him uh, because of the many responsibilities that he has uh, concerning all of us, the, the churches, the university, the schools, uh, other institutions, the radio, the OTV, let's commit him to the Lord. Let's also be in prayer for our workers, uh, starting with our worship team, who will be ministering our ushers, our welcomers, our intercessors. Let's be in prayers for all those. And also, let's be in prayers for our nation. And now, I come to my message, and as I come to my message, I would like to remind us that we have been walking through the book of First John uh, that talks about our fellowship with God that results in love for God and the love for one another. And uh, that love for one another is the one that pushes us to go out and evangelize, to go out and witness. And the whole of this month, guess what is going to be happening? We are going to be reaching out and then evangelizing. I was uh, challenged when our bishop uh, was with him on uh, Friday and they told us even now he is winning people on a weekly basis in the office. As they come with various challenges, he is leading them to the Lord. So that should challenge you and me that he is also a witness. Well, I asked the media team to put the slides there and uh, I want to start us off with the powers that God has given unto us to be able to witness. And even before I go with, uh, and they talk about the word of God as one of the powers that he has given unto us to witness, I would like to remind us that prayer actually is the first one uh, because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the people of the world, so that they might not see the glory of the kingdom of God. And they might not have a desire even to receive salvation. So the prayer that you pray before you go to witness is the one that removes that blindness, is the one that removes that veil, is the one that uh, breaks the chains. So that as you go, you just go and they have it. And in my life there are some people I have gone to witness and I just tell them, you receive Jesus Christ. And they say, yes sir. And then I tell them, repeat this prayer after me, Lord Jesus Christ. And I am like, wow, it feels nice. Who is next? So sometimes you might be afraid but it is very easy because it is not you who is doing it. It is the Lord who is doing it through you and through me. And then secondly, let's talk about the word of God. I'll be going to use the scriptures and I'll be reading. Uh, the first one is Hebrews 4.12. I just want to read Hebrews 4.12. The Bible says, For the word of God is living, it is active, it is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to the dividing soul and the spirit, joints and marrows. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes to whom we must give an account. So the word of God we are told there, in that scripture, it is active, it is powerful, it brings 
transformation in people's lives. So the word of God alone, when it leads somebody, I'm reminded of Pharaoh in Genesis, when he was told by Moses, the Lord has said, has sent me with his word, that he will release his people so that they might go and worship. And because he was hardened of heart, he started asking, who is the Lord, that they might obey him. And the Bible tells us that the word of God is like a slate armor that hammers very hard acts. I don't know whether you have a pharaoh in your house. You might have a pharaoh in your office. You might have a pharaoh in your business. You might have a pharaoh in the marketplace. You might have, have a pharaoh in your brother or sister. As you keep hammering them with the word of God, guess what is happening? Their hearts are getting softened. To the glory of God. Amen. Then secondly, Romans 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17 says, And the faith comes from hearing, and the hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and the hearing the word of God. Tell your neighbor, if you want more faith, you need to read more scriptures. So that is very simple. You have the Bible. If you want faith that can move mountains, just study the Bible. Read it again and again and again. Just like when you eat uh, ugali and the nyamachoma, unasema, ugali sosa, sindio? More please. Niongeze <laughs> tabadani. So the word of God is very powerful. There is a time I went to witness in one of our, actually it was the University of Nairobi, with a, a, a teacher, my teacher who was teaching me evangelism in Bible school as, at master's level. And we had five questions. We came up with very clever questions to ask these students. And that day, I remember when we went there, we were moving from hostel to hostel. And nobody was giving their lives to the Lord. Then this lecturer told me, we need to change strategy. And I did not know what he meant to change strategy. So he said, let's now use the, employ the power of the God's word. Let's employ the power of the word of God. And they quoted to me Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Where the apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the word of God. For it is the power of God unto salvation. And I say, Professor, let's go. So when we went now, we started sharing scriptures with these people. And then before, within about 30 minutes, we had gotten 12 young people giving their lives to the Lord. We had an abundant harvest. What happened? We employed the power of God. We let the word of God speak for itself. The word of God is like a lion. You don't need to defend a lion. Just throw it out there. And you will see it devouring very hard heart. And then another scripture I want to share with us is Isaiah 55. It's a powerful word also. Isaiah 55 verse 10. As the rain and the snow come from the heavens, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bad and flourish, so that it yields a seed for the sower and the bread for the eater. So is my word that goes from my mouth. It will not return unto me empty, it will accomplish what I desire. It will achieve the purpose for which I send it. So the word of God is likened like rain. And the rain comes down, and it waters the ground, and as, as it was, uh, waters the ground, it sinks even under the ground. And it brings some things to sprout, and they come to the service. So when the word of God is released on an individual, when the word of God is released in a situation, it goes there and they work some miracles, and we are able to see them. Finally, as I read the word of God, I want to read Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. The Bible says, The hand of God took up, uh, 
the hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and they set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. The bones were bright. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I say, O oh, suffering Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to those bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. These bones, I will make bread enter into you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendon, uh, tendons to you and make flesh come out uh, upon you and uh, cover you with the skin. I will put breath in you, and uh, you will come to life, then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and the flesh appeared on them and the skin covered them. And uh, there was no bread in them. Then he said to me, prophesy the bread. Prophesy son of man. Uh, and uh, uh, say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds, all bread, breathe on this land, they, that they may live. So I prophesied and I commanded them, and the bread entered them, and they came to life, and they stood on their feet, a fast army. So, when you speak the word of God, to dry bones, a dry dream, a dry marriage, a dry business, a dry employment, a dry child, a dry womb, it comes back to life, provided you believe the word of the Lord. Like Ezekiel, he believed the word of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, believe the word of the Lord. <laughs> and I know I'm speaking to people who are facing mountains. Your mountain can melt before you leave your sin. If you address it authoritatively in the name of Jesus Christ and the commanded to try, commanded to be dismantled, commanded to be uprooted and cast into the sea. You can address your mountain. You don't need to go there. You can ascend it and let it can go. As I was preparing this uh, sermonette, I felt the Lord tell me, Americans are not the first ones to develop a missile. But rather God is the first one to develop a missile. He was drawing missiles from heaven. And they say, let there be light. And light was coming to be. Let there be the heavens. And the heavens were screaming. Let there be land. And the land sprang. Let there be animals in the waters. And the fishes and the crocodiles, they came. As he spoke the word. So speak to your situation. Speak to your mountain. Don't keep quiet on it. We are being given a new man. What do you desire to see happening in the new man? Speak it, and the soul shall it be. The word of God has creative power. And it can be framed, it can be created, it can be bring to bar whatever you desire to see happening. Secondly, the other power to witness is the power of the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor, the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> In answer to the apostles, Jesus Christ told the, the disciples not to leave Jerusalem until they were endured with the power from on earth. He told them, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And He is going to empower you. He is going to give you power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. But he told them, go and wait and tarry. And I have good news for you. You don't have to tarry. You don't have to wait. The Holy Spirit was released 2,000 years ago. You don't have to tarry anymore. What are you tarrying? What are you waiting for? He was released 2,000 years ago. And he is here. He is yours for the taking. He is yours for the taking. Just receive him. 
and they move with this power. And as the disciples received uh, this baptism, we are told, especially of Peter, who was denied Jesus Christ a few weeks before. We are told he spoke the word of God with power and with authority. And in his first sermon, he led 3,000 souls to the Lord. Amen. Can you imagine? The same Peter started praying for the sick, and they were being healed. The same Peter started raising the dead, just like Jesus Christ did. And in Acts chapter 8, we have Dorcas, who was raised from the dead by the apostle Peter. So the Holy Spirit empowers us. When you receive the Holy Spirit, even those of you who are baptized, you need to ask God to fill you again and again on a daily basis. Because they were baptized in chapter 2, and in chapter 4 they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they continued being filled on a daily basis. And as they were filled, they went out there and they did miracle signs and wonders to the glory of God. The other thing that uh, the Holy Spirit does is to clarify the message. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, the Apostle Paul is speaking here, When I came to you, my brother, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you with weakness and in fear and much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. I was thinking as I was preparing again about the late evangelist, they not bonded. He was not very eloquent by any human standard. And his messages were very simple. But before he died, he had led over 70 million to the Lord. 70 million, one man. Tell your neighbor, 70 million, over 70 million. Those are nations, isn't it? That could be East Africa put together, I don't know. One man. And I say, God help me. Billy Graham also, before he died, we are told that he led over 200 million to the Lord. 200 million. One man. So, where are we going to appear when uh, Christ comes to us? And he is going to be asking us, how many did you bring to the kingdom? When you go to heaven, how many will you meet there whom you have witnessed? And they are gone there because of your witness. That is a challenge. I think you need to ask God to have mercy upon you. And it is okay to punctuate this message with the immense and hallelujah as we prepare for the bishop. Are we going to be quiet on him like this? <laughs> Amen. Encourage me here. Amen. Enlightenment also. The, the Holy Spirit brings enlightenment according to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter uh, 4, uh, chapter 1 rather, verse 5. First Thessalonians, uh, let's turn there, chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says, Because our gospel came to you, not simply with word, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with the deep conviction. You know how we lived among you. You became imitators of us, and of the Lord, in spite of fear suffering, you welcome the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And you became model to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message ran out from you 
not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God became known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell us that you turned from God, uh, you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God. And this is the Macedonian, uh, the Macedonians and the Solonians. And the Apostle Paul declared the message of the gospel to them. And if you know how this church began, it was planted within three weeks. The Apostle uh, Paul was there, and uh, somebody brewed trouble for them. And the persecution began, and they had to run away. The Apostle Paul had to run away for his life. But uh, the message that he had declared within three weeks was enough to turn uh, the Solanaika upside down. And now he is telling them, because of that enlightenment, because of that understanding that you received from the word of God, you were able to model the life of Jesus Christ. So much so that we don't need even to testify or to tell anyone about your salvation because it is being spoken. I don't know whether you have gone somewhere and you find your fame has already reached there. Yeah? You introduce yourself and uh, somebody tells you, I have already heard a lot about you. Okay, it, is good. it was good news. <laughs> Whatever they are. And that is the kind of witness we want to have. We would like it to be said of Sitam Rongai. When you go to Europe, I have heard of Sitam Rongai. When you go to UK, uh, I have heard of Sitam Rongai. When you go to America, when you go to Asia, when you go to Africa. And I was telling the first time this, we already have representatives in the US, UK, uh, Iraq, and even Saudi Arabia. We have some members here who are laboring in those nations. And I trust that they are shining the light of Christ, the light of the gospel there, so that others might come into the kingdom. So you have no excuse. You have the word of God. You have enlightenment. You have empowerment from the Holy Spirit. And you also have the weapon of prayer so that you might be able to witness. So let's go to the final slide that summarizes what I have been saying. And you are going to see for yourself that as you witness, there are various forces that are um, fighting for you. Now they have gone ahead. Yes, there you are. As you witness, as you preach the word of God, the Holy Spirit from above is empowering you. He is enabling you. And as you, he enables you, and as you speak the word of God, he is bringing enlightenment to the listener. And also the prayers are working on this individual. So there are many forces at work, as you witness. And as our elder here has said, once you have done your bit, it is not for you to say. Once you witness, you will leave the results to God. So there is no losing in witness. As a matter of fact, once you have planted the seed, that seed might not start germinating immediately. But two weeks down the line, one month down the line, one year down the line, this is the person that is going to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and the Savior. So I encourage you to go out there knowing very well that we are being empowered by the Spirit. We have the equipment of the Word of God, which is a double-edged sword. And again, you don't need to claim that you are not, you don't speak peace English, because even Moses said that excuse. But it is not by power, it is not by might, but by the Spirit of the living God. Uh, I don't have time to give examples, but I will just give one. Uh, before I became a pastor, I was working somewhere in a certain office. And in that office, as I was working, I went to my boss and I asked him whether I could have permission to have uh, 
the devotions on Wednesdays in the office. And they allowed me. And one of the days as I was sharing the devotion, I saw him walking to the meeting. We had a, a small boardroom where we used to be. And then he listened to me as I was ministering. And when I said it is time to pray, he came actually and then in the front of all the other workers, he nailed down. They said, yes, pray for me. And I pray for him. And maybe you are fearing your boss. But this is what he has been waiting. He is waiting for somebody to introduce him to the Lord. So don't be afraid. Talk to your boss. Talk to your colleagues. Talk to your brothers. Talk to your sisters. I have given the testimonies here again, again, uh, and again about my family. When I went to witness to my family, around 92, uh, there were five of them that I was speaking to. And I knew because my dad was very philosophical, and he was very argumentative, and they used to like this on him. I knew he was the last one to get saved. But guess what? When I met the Otako, he surprised me. He did not even think twice his hand went back. And he encouraged me. I said, now there is a new evangelist in town. Let me am the gospel. And I am at again. And there was a sister of mine who raised her hand. I said, now I have two souls. Let me continue. I gave the Otako again. There was a brother. Of mine also will get his life for the Lord. And then after that, there was a sister of mine who was away. And she happened to arrive when I was just leaving the altar. And she came and lifted her hand. Now I was very shocked because my mom, whom I thought was my greatest supporter, her hand was not up. And I said, Is there any other soul before we cross? And I was opening my eyes. Then I said, let me just uh, pray for this one. Before I, I lose them. Before they put their hands <laughs> And I start losing them. Let me pray for them. And the God performed another miracle. My mom joined. She did not lift her hand, but she joined in the prayer of repentance. So that my first witness at home, I won five souls, including my mom and my dad. And I was telling God, God, I did not know I am an evangelist. So I surprised myself. You might surprise yourself. Just go and try it. I remember I had a small Gideon Bible. I was not a pastor. I was just a new fellow. I was a young boy. And yet, these people were sent to me for the glory of God. So I want to challenge you, as you go to the Matatu, I have ever witnessed in Matatu. I have ever spoken even in Abbas. You see those people say, let's pray. I have ever done that. <laughs> Crazy faith. So don't be ashamed. Don't be apart to proclaim the word of the Lord. As you sit in that Matatu, as you go to town from Rongai, witness to somebody. Just make a prayer, Lord, lead me to somebody I can introduce to you. As you move around in the market, in those kiosks, those people you buy bread for, you buy groceries for, introduce them to the Lord. That is how it happens. Those friends of yours and the colleagues in your place of work, I led several of my colleagues uh, in my place of work to the Lord. And some years later, I am driving towards an apple with a, a policeman is close me. And then uh, he happened to have been one of my disciples. I asked him, Boniface, are you still born again? And they told me he is still born again. So, who are you taking to heaven? That is the challenge I want to give us. And if you are here and you don't have that testimony, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
you will be the first one we give you that opportunity. Why don't we bow for our word of prayer? Just bow away. Anyone who wants to receive Jesus Christ? Indicate by your outraised hand, I'll see it and I'll pray for you. Um, looking, yes, there is one here. Anyone else? Anyone else? Somebody else who wants to receive Jesus Christ? I'm scanning through the crowd. Anyone? Okay. Then we are going to have our sister receive Jesus Christ. Then the second day we want to know if you are here and you are trusting God for healing. You are trusting God for healing in your body. Just indicate by your upright and I want to pray for you. You are trusting God for healing of your body. Yes, I can see those hands. Uh, all hands on this session. Five. Okay, one here. Anyone else? Yes, somebody at the back. I can see some hands at the back. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Let's just pray. You don't have to come to the front. The Lord is going to touch you from where you are. He is not limited by distance. And you don't have to have somebody lay hands on you. Just transport and let you be there. Let's pray. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for your word. That is powerful. That is sharper than any double-edged sword. It is active. It is alive. It can penetrate between the soul and even the spirit, the bone and the marrow. And we release this one, O oh God, upon those who are sick, upon those who are afflicted, both in this sanctuary and in the hospitals, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that it is going to effect a cure. It is going to correct any deformities, anything that is a mess, anything that is a miss in the lives of your people, O oh God. Lord, I pray that as your word hits those cells, hits that blood, O oh God, it is going to dislodge any work of the enemy in their lives, O oh God. And Lord, I pray that they will sense your healing power and you are touched upon their lives. And Lord, we decree total and complete deliverance, total and complete healing. We decree that by your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit, they are healed. Lord, also we want to pray for those who do not know you as their Lord and the Savior, even in this sanctuary, for you are convicting power, O oh God. Convict them unto sin and righteousness, and then draw them by your blessed Holy Spirit. We are saving Lord and the Lord. Lord, we pray that you will give us boldness and courage as we go out throughout the week, O oh God, and uh, help us to sow a seed in somebody's life, O oh God, and uh, introduce them to Jesus Christ. Lord, also we want to pray for our nation, O oh Master, as we go to this campaign season, O oh God, that you will bring so pride, O oh God, that you will bring unity, O oh God, that you bring love, O oh God, that you bring harmony, O Master. And the Lord, you will stop all the bickering that is happening across this nation, O God. And they help our politicians, O Master, even to campaign this week for the glory and honor of your holy name. And Lord, we continue to pray that you shall keep us and help us to identify leaders, that you take this nation to the next level according to your plans and your purposes for all of us. We pray for those who are afflicted by sicknesses and diseases in the hospitals, in their homes, whether it is corona, whether it is other conditions, oh God. Stretch forth your mighty hand and they heal them and the rest of them. We ask it with us to be Check you again. And if you discover the sickness has disappeared, 
Come and bring our report. Give a report to the ushers. Write it. It's our testimony. And we will read it next Sunday. To the glory of God. Amen. Our sister, we will give your life to the Lord. You can come to the front. As we just make this up. Ask us to stand. Ask us to stand. Ask us to stand. Ask us to stand. Ask us to stand.